Hey guys, and welcome back to the DIY HVAC Guy YouTube channel. In today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to power your gas furnace or your heat pump or your air conditioner in the event of an emergency power outage, whether that's in the winter time, in the summer time, uh, whatever the case, it's actually very easy to do. You'll walk over here, we're gonna show you how this home is set up. Thankfully, the meter is right here by the generator. But this is what we've installed. This is called an interlock kit. And basically the whole purpose of this is to prevent this main from ever being on at the same time as our generator power. So as soon as we flip this breaker off, this thing will slide over and then we can turn our generator on and none of these two will ever have any back feeding issues or anything like that. Now, if you'll notice down here, we've got our power inlet box. And this is where you're going to plug your generator in. It's very easy. This will power basically anything in your home as long as it's under the threshold of what your generator will um, provide, this will power it. So instead of just powering your furnace like we've done on some other videos, this will power everything that you need to power as long as your generator will provide power. So we're gonna show you in this video how to set this up so that everything is very easy to use in the event of an emergency. All right, so here is our main power box. This is our main 200 amp power supply. And as you can see, we have some open slots here. We're going to install this 50 amp breaker here. This will be a dedicated breaker for our generator. And then right here out the bottom, we'll have our power inlet box. So we can simply plug our generator in. We can power our gas furnace. We can power lights. Basically anything that our generator will support on this uh, breaker that we have installed. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pop out these two tabs and then we're going to install our breaker. So we're just gonna take off this front cover. And these little tabs are super easy. Just bend them back and forth. And they'll snap off. Be very cautious. Obviously, you're working with high voltage here, so be very cautious not to touch any of this um, as it's live. All we're gonna do, <clears throat> We're gonna make sure our breaker is turned off so if we do accidentally touch these, it's not gonna be a problem. But we're just gonna slip it into the two tabs here. Just like that. So the breaker is in. Now let's put this cover back on temporarily. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold the interlock kit in place exactly where we want it. So we've got it where we want it. And we're just gonna trace all of the outlines here. And then we can take it off and we can see exactly where we need to put our holes. We'll remove these screws. And then um, these screws are designed to go through the actual metal and it'll still allow this to slide back and forth like that. So we've got our panel um, just sitting on a flat surface and we've got this base plate exactly where we had it. The top piece is what lined up with these marks. So when we lay that on top, these marks will line up. So we're just gonna take the top piece off, line this back up and then we'll make our marks. One there, one there, and one there. I'll just go ahead and put one in completely. Now the way this works is this little sleeve will slide down into this groove and allow it to slide. So you can tighten this as much as you want and this will still slide. As you can see we still got movement. So let's go ahead and put our other two in. 
All right, so we're just gonna tighten these up completely. And that's basically how this will work. Easy peasy. All right, guys, so here is our interlock kit. So as you can see, um, with our interlock kit this way, we cannot turn this on, but we can turn this one on and vice versa. We cannot turn that on until this is slid over. So we move this, slide it over, and then we can turn our main back on. So this is just, um, this is permanent. We just put the cover on to show you this part, but we're going to run our conduit or our wiring and then our conduit and we'll have our power inlet box right here. So as you can see on the bottom of our main panel, we have these little knockouts. Some of them are made for three quarter and half. I'm gonna use this one because it just has a half inch knockout. And you just tap it from the bottom and then bend it back and forth until it pops out. So we've got our hole punched out for our conduit. It's gonna go out of the box 90 into the side. We'll go ahead and feed our wire. This is uh, number 10. We just took the shielding off and we're just gonna slide it through the conduit. And then go ahead and slide it into our box. Just gonna feed this in. Get that started. We can leave quite a bit of length because we have a lot of room inside this box. So we're just gonna start by doing our ground. Our ground is gonna go right here. Just like that. Next, we'll do our one hot leg. Just go ahead and strip all of these back. Now, as you can see on here, the only one that's not colored is the black, but these are labeled. So X and Y are too hot and white's gonna be our neutral. So let's go ahead and put our red in. We're just gonna slide it all the way in. And then on the side here, we've got a Phillips that will lock that in place. Let's give it a tug and make sure it's tight. Neutral. Good. And last but not least, our other hot leg. Here. We have to mount this, so we're gonna leave that loose. And then we can put our three mounting screws into the siding and then run this up to our box. So we've got our box. We're just going to slip these wires in, just kind of let this hang for the time being. And run this nut through, snug this up. So this is just going to go 90 to right here. So we're just going to make sure that's symmetrical and then we'll run our three screws into uh, the sheeting here and then we can permanently mount this box. So now we can permanently mount this. Just feed our wires in. This will lock in on the back side, just like that. And then got a little locking screw right there. Just lock that in. And we are done with that portion. Perfect. So now, 
we're just gonna run these wires up and over making sure that our breaker is off while we do this and we're gonna take our ground and we're gonna put it on our ground lug here loosen one of these slide that in until it's touching this back plate you can see it's all the way in Snug that up. So our neutral is going to go to our, um, this is a bonded neutral. So this is gonna go to our grounding bar as well. So we're gonna cut this right here. Lead that in all the way. And lastly, we're gonna leave these two this length. So we're just gonna strip these back. that and again making sure this breaker is off this is backed out probably go under this wire here make sure we're fully in lock that in place give it a yank make sure it's tight and the same with our other hot right there easy as that so we're just going to push these back make sure that our front cover is not going to be hitting anything and now we are good to permanently mount our cover easy as that all right, so our home is completely set up for generator power in the event of an emergency. Now, if you zoom in here, you'll see our interlock kit here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shut off the main, which is the only way that we'll be able to move this over. That's the only way this will slide over. Then we're gonna flip our generator power on, which makes this one not usable. So we can't back feed or anything. Now we already have our generator, um, 220 plug uh, plugged in here. Once we turn our power on, this should illuminate green, signifying that we have power here. Oh, All right, so, so our inducer just came on. We just have ignition now, so we've got hot air coming out of the exhaust, and we should have warm air in just a minute. As you can see, all of our lights are working and our thermostat is on. So one thing to note with the thermostat is that you don't wanna turn the generator off because that will kill the furnace while it's mid cycle and that can definitely damage the heat exchanger. So before you turn the generator off, you always wanna make sure that this threshold is set to less than the temperature in the home and give it about uh, two or three minutes just to let the heat exchanger cool off Okay, so heat is off. Now just let it run for another couple minutes to cool off the heat exchanger, and then you can turn the generator off. But as you can see, all of the lights and everything are um, working, and that's the advantage to having this whole home backup power as opposed to just having the backup power for your furnace. All right, so now that our generator is off, we're just going to flip the gen breaker off, slide this over, and we have restored power. So it's as easy as that. Now this is the generator that we were using. It's a 3,500 watt um, 220 volt. So this can power some 220 items. Granted, they're less than a peak load of 3,500 watts. Now in a future video, we're gonna show you how to install an easy start kit, which will allow you to run a smaller generator like this one and still provide power to your heat pump or to your AC during the summer months. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video beneficial for you and your family in the event of an emergency. I love to share videos like this that are helpful to people, and obviously this is all free to you. Uh, the only thing that I ask is, if you can, share this with one of your friends if you found it beneficial. This could be life-saving information in the event of a winter storm 
or it could be really helpful in a summer power outage as well. So until next time, you guys be safe and we'll catch you on the next one. Later.